Well, hi there, this is DB Team, and I am the creator or author, I guess, of Quake Champions Doom Edition, this mod that you might be interested in playing. Now, this video is divided into three parts, and the first one I'm gonna be giving you the introduction to QCDE and the QXandronom engine. The second part is the installation process, and the third part will be just a, a little bit of configuration of the thing. So without further ado, let's just jump into the thing. QCDE or Quake Champions Doom Edition, as you know, it's a, it's a mod for Doom that I created, bringing mechanics, uh, weapons and champions from the game by its software, Quake Champions. Now this is of course a PvP focused mod, although you can still play it in single player if you wish, be that against mod or in an actual campaign. Uh, you may be familiar with this mod, but what's important, what's new, is the engine that we are using. We're using QXandronom, which is a fork of Xandronom. Now, if you're not too much into Xandronom and you don't know a whole lot about what, what the hell I'm talking about, basically this is just a fork of the original engine that we were using. And sorry if you hear airplanes on the background, that's completely normal. <laughs> um, this fork, as you can see over here on the screen, the, the, the main thing is that it brings quick movement and that means it no longer has to follow the doom physics regarding how it moves, how you jump, all the trick jumps and all of that, instead it has that of Quake, so that makes it a much more, uh, a, a experience much more closer to Quake. Now it also includes some uh, improvements on the netcode, uh, which makes uh, spectating better, it also, the, the client server prediction, many little things like that have been improved. It may not be perfect yet, but it really is bringing some new stuff to, to the table compared to the original Xandronum. And of course it also has some, as you can see over there, multiple twi tweaks and fixes. Um, I'm not gonna go into all the details, for that you can visit this page on qxandronum.com uh, and you can see all the documentation as to what it is that it brings. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea as to why we're moving towards using this engine that definitely provides us with the quake movement, which was something that we could not achieve um, by just making a mod on the normal engine. Instead, this engine comes baked in with the movement. So, all right, that's basically QCDE and that's QXandronom. Now, moving to the second part of the video, which is how to install it. Um, at the moment, there's no download link on this page yet, but it will be done shortly after this video is released. But you can also find it um, directly on Mod Database uh, by, you know, finding the QCDE. It's actually really easy to find QCDE on, on ModDB. You just go to Google QCDE ModDB and it will be the first result that you're going to get. So once you're here, all you need to do is go to File Section and go for this one. The first one that says QCDE version 2.7 standalone QXandronum. There is a normal standalone version that's for the old engine. No, this is with the new engine and that's the one you want to have a look at. Uh, open it, go to download now. And if uh, Mod Database asks you to stop it with the ads, <laughs> if it asks you to sign in in order to download, that's not actually uh, completely necessary. Let me just mute this, thank you. Um, you don't actually need to sign in, you don't need to have an account. If it asks you to do that, just go to where it says to find other mirrors. Uh, you click on it and select whichever works for you. So I just picked one and I'm gonna download it. It will take a little bit because like I was saying, this file contains everything that you need in order to play the mod. Uh, you don't even need to own Doom 2 in order to play this because it comes bundled with freedom. Uh, a free version of Doom, non-copyright infringing. So this one can be freely distributed. It's not piracy, it's completely legal. So once you download this, I will show you how to, to run it. But in the meantime, while well, we make time for the next 100 megabytes missing, um, yeah, you don't need to download anything else. Just this one file contains everything. So you will be good to go. It's about to be done and there it is. So I'm just gonna go to the actual folder. This is a zip file, so you can just extract it with WinZip, WinRAR, whatever. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna extract it here. It will create the folder that I need, in this case named QXandronom, open it, and here it is. Everything that you need in order to play is right here. So, for anybody that is familiar on how to, to run mods with Xandronom, it's pretty much exactly the same thing over here. But for those that aren't all that familiar with running mods or anything, uh, we added a couple of batch files that you can use in order to, to launch the game. Um, this one that says QCD Ian plus QCD Maps is for you to play offline um, with some bots. I'm just gonna double click it and show you what happens. 
Oh uh, yeah, the moment is gonna give me some warning. Don't worry, there's no viruses in here. You can just scan it. <laughs> Select whichever you prefer, be that Freedom, Freedom 2 or FreeDM. I'm gonna go with whichever, it really doesn't matter. And it will launch the game for you. And that's about it. It will, with that, you will be ready to start playing this mod. Sorry the screen went black for a little bit, but you know, things here and there. And there you have it. You're ready to start playing. And that's about it. But like I was saying, this is a, a local game. You can also jump into multiplayer by, hold on, the screen should be coming up. There you go. Uh, clicking this one, play online. It will launch Doomseeker. Uh, yeah, just allow them, trust me. <laughs> it will launch Doomseeker, which is uh, what's gonna be looking for online games. You know, here before, yeah, it doesn't matter. So at this point, you can see that it shows me some servers. It can show me where there are some games to be played. So that's basically the installation process and how to run the mod. There's not a whole lot to be learned about this. Um, so let, how about we jump into the third part of this video, which is just going to be doing some quick configurations of the engine. All right, so now I'm launching the game once again, and it's going to go into full screen. So the screen will be black for a second. It will come back. There it is. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is basically the standard configuration of the game. It will have very familiar type of keybinds that you know from other games, um, more contemporary games. It's no longer the case like where Xandernum would give you really strange old school bindings. No, now you have your WSAD for movement, space for jump, mouse one for fire, mouse two for alt fire, or in this case, zooming the weapon, and a bunch of uh, little default bindings. Now, I don't love those personally, because that's not how I play. However, it's very easy to configure them all in one place. Uh, unlike in the normal Xandernum, we have simplified the, uh, the menus so that it's easier to find the configuration that you want without having to dig through zillions and zillions of options that may not even concern you at the moment. So just go to QCD options and here we go. Let's go for binding some, some stuff. We have our movement, fire, I like to use these two keys. Alt fire, I'm gonna set it up over here, jump. Of course, this is my preference as to how I am going to be um, binding stuff, right? So this is completely up to you. I really suggest you to bind something to champion information. This comes really handy because that's how you get to know what your champion does and what movement it has. Um, so I'm gonna set it up for F1 voice line and you know so you can definitely go ahead and set up all of your keybinds as you prefer uh, let me do this very quickly now you get to see actually how I use my keybinds but hey maybe you like them maybe you won't so that's pretty much um, how you set up all your weapons you know all the the quick champions weapons into this game and there you go I have my keybinds now let's proceed and do some other configurations. The mouse options, again, unlike in regular Xandernum, are way simplified and you no longer have to um, deal with weird sliders that weren't extremely explicit or that they were really strange. Uh, vertical and horizontal speed now are matched. So your vertical and horizontal is the same. Before you had to kind of set it up to 0.5 for it to work. No, not anymore. All you gotta worry at this point is just set up your sensitivity to something that you like. And if you are indeed the type of person who prefers to have, I don't know, the horizontal higher or the vertical higher, you can also adjust that. So this is kind of my setup. Um, there's another slider over here in mouse options, which is the zoom scale mouse. Um, so basically it's how the sensitivity is gonna be when you're zoomed in a weapon. So if you want it to be more sensitive, you can just go ahead and change that. And there you go. So of course, all of these are preferences. It's however you prefer to do it. It's completely up to you. Now let's look at another set of configurations over here. The heads up and display. While there seem to be a lot of options over here, all of them are useful. And of course, the ones that you want to use, you can ignore. FOB. Um, finally, you can have your FOB on a slider and it won't be resetting. Uh, Older versions of, you know, Xandronum and even GZ Doom and Z Doom in some situations, every time that you would die, respawn, or restart, it would set up your FOB back to 90. So it was really annoying. You had to do some hacks here and there in order to get the FOB applying constantly. Not anymore. Now you just need to set it up once on their heads up, heads up and display, set it up, and you'll be set for the rest of whenever, for as long as you have this thing installed over here. Move bobbing intensity just refers to the head bobbing when you're moving. You can see on the wall a little bit. It's actually not really easy to see with this champion. Um, let me just switch to another champion like this one. 
You can kind of see how my head is bobbing as I am going, as I am moving. It kind of goes up and down, up and down. You can adjust that. You can make it really, really, really visible. And it will get you nauseous, probably. <laughs> or you can straight up disable it, which honestly is what I prefer to do. You can just disable it and it will look kind of like you're floating a little bit, but at least you don't have that weird bobbing in all, all places. Um, all right, so let's have a look at another one, Crosshair Type. Now, unfortunately, because of how the menus work, I'm unable, you're unable to see the crosser right now, but you can select whichever you prefer. In my particular case, for example, you can have some Quake 3 style um, crosshair, or I personally love the shotgun one. So you can select your, your thing, no problem, no, no big issue, right? Also, you can select if the crosser is going to be showing your health. You can see that my crosser is green right now. The more damage I take, it starts going orange. Come on, dude. Ah, oh, really? I didn't mean to kill you. All right, I'm going to hurt myself. And I can't. Can anybody hurt me, please? Thank you. How kind of you. You can see that my crosser is going redder, showing that I'm low on health. So this is a, an option for easy knowing how you're doing on health. I personally don't like it, so I disable it. You have the option to keep it or, or leave it however you prefer. So I'm gonna get rid of it, I don't like it. And then you can set up your crosser color, which I personally like cyan. And there you have it, your uh, configuration. At the moment, on this engine, you cannot scale the crosser yet. So this is something that we're looking, well, actually the developer of the Fuse engine uh, will be looking into. But for the meantime, you, you if this crosser doesn't do it for you, just select a bigger one. Um, we're working to provide more options, but that will be for another version. Um, more options. We have the speedometer, of course. You know what it does. It shows you your current speed on the screen. You can see it below my crosser. It's just in case you want to know how you're doing with uh, with your movement, ta uh, little tricks and all of that shit. Uh, we have the weapon bar, which is this side over here. If you want to disable it, it's no problem so that it doesn't get in your view. But I personally like it. Health bar style, it shows if, it, if you want these little blocks over here or if you want it to be a straight up bar. It will apply just in a second. There you ha have it. So it's literally just a visual little thing, but in case you want it. Uh, low, ammo low ammo warning, low health warning, however you prefer with sound and text, just the sound, just the text. Weapon hit markers means if you're, whenever you deal damage to an enemy, you can see that red mark around my crosser. You can turn that off if you want. Damage numbers, pretty self-explanatory. And then we have some effects, which I think is gonna be important for a bunch of people. In particular, the weapon fire and recoil. You can see that when I shoot a weapon, Kind of like my my pitch, my my angle changes a little bit. It's more visible with this weapon. You can see how it moves my camera a little bit. While it doesn't affect your aim, um, I know that some people don't really like. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> some people don't really like this this screen effect. So you can just. Is that an airplane in game? Wow, amazing. You can um, disable this this screen shake. Again, you just go to the effects and turn it off. It's weapon fire and recoil, and now your your pitch no longer changes when you're firing. So that's uh, for a more steady view, I suppose. You know what? I'm gonna go god mode over here for a sec. Just <laughs> all right. So uh, continuing over here, uh, blood smears is when you take damage. It shows on your heads-up display a little bit of blood. You can turn that on or off. LG beam. It just means if you want to see your beam of the lightning gun or not. I'll show you just in a sec. So there's my lightning gun beam. You can see where I'm shooting or you can just straight up disable it. I'm going for invisible. There we go. It takes a little bit to apply, but there you go. So some people don't like seeing the lightning gun beam. You can have that indeed if you just prefer it to work like this. I like the beam, obviously, but hey. Uh, pick up flash intensity is whenever you pick up an item, say this shotgun, you can see that the screen kind of flashes a little bit, so you can turn that down so that it doesn't even flash at all. You'll still get the sound effects indicating that you, you did. Uh, you did pick it up, but, but you can disable it. Um, uh, we were on blood intensity. When you take damage, your screen goes red. 
Other, I mean, these are the blood smears, but you can see that the rest of the screen also goes red. Uh, you can disable it so that it doesn't look as red. So when you're taking damage, you can basically dis disable the blood smears. You can disable the uh, the the tint, the screen tint too. Now let's go into. This is a specific setting just for Eradicator. I'm not gonna go into it, but um, basically Eradicator. I say I'm not going, and I'm going. Uh, it shows a radar when you use your ability. You can have it big center, which will occupy a bunch of the screen, or you can have it like a little indicator around here. So that's um, those are the options. Now we have, of course, sound options for the volume of all the sounds, just the menu, just the music, and the announcer. You can decide which announcer you want. You can go for default, I suggest, because that's the, uh, the, the, the announcer that we use. And here we go with another bit of Quick Champions Doom Edition options. Hit beeps when you deal damage to an enemy. You can hear a little beeping. You, you're, I think you're familiar with this. You can disable that the, those little beeps. Um, auto taunt chance that you don't really have to toy too much with that. It's just how often your champion is gonna taunt enemies when you get a kill. So you can make it that it happens a lot or it never happens. Um, taunt subtitles. Sometimes you can decide if you want to have subtitles appearing as to what the champion is saying. Completely optional. Um, if you want the original soundtrack, the music that you're he listening to right now, or you can disable it. And this applies um, if you want the music to be shuffled, randomized, or how you want it. You don't really have to double with any of this. Uh, and then we have the video options. Again, we have another slider of the FOB over here, just in case anybody's looking for it here. Uh, brightness, screen size, vertical sync, all of this good stuff that you would need is just in one single place. And then we have a few QCD specific options, the weapon that you want to start with. Uh, this applies for single player missions, so it's not for, for PvP. And it's the same over here. So if you, if you want to know about how to play this in single player, let me know and I might make a video about it. Right now I'm only focusing on the PvP portion of this mod. And uh, that's pretty much all the options that you have available. Like I said, they're condensed so that there's pretty, all of them are pretty much in the same places, organized. But if you want to go to the standard bunch of options that Xandronum would offer you, even use Xandronum, you can go over here where it says all engine options and there you go. You have a ton of options. Each one of these has a ton of things that I got rid of in the main menus just so that you don't have to really deal with all of this stuff. But yeah, there you have it. So that's basically how to how to uh, install the mod, how to play a little bit like I am right now with some bots and have some fun. Um, and yeah, by the way, while we're here, might as well tell you that you can also switch maps while you're here if you're playing against bots. Uh, you can just go to the console and go map QCDE from one to, I don't know, I think it's up to 40. So you can just change the map and the bots will be there to make some, to give you some company. So there you have it. That's pretty much it. I hope this video is useful. I try to make it a bit more focused, not so rambly, even though I still do. Um, I hope that the timestamps help. And let me know if you have more questions about how to get this mod going, how to play some games and all of that, and I'll be happy to help you because we're really getting some people interested in playing this thing and it's really fun now that we have the quake movement so all right that's it for me thank you very much for watching and i'll see you on the arena until then take care everybody